Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of That Sewing Blab. I am so happy for tonight's show. Well, I'm always happy for one of our shows, but tonight I'm really, really happy again for this lovely woman who's here in front of you. And I know you guys see someone that's missing, but you do see her little picture over there in the corner. But um, for those of you who are new, the lady who's missing, and you see her little picture over there with the yellow circle, that's Dawn Pingali from the blog Dueling Design. She's our host of the show, and I'm her co-host, Myra Rentmeester from the blog Simple Inspiration. And that beautiful woman right there with that gorgeous smile, I know a lot of you uh, are popping in right now, already know who she is, but we're going to get to her in just a second. I just want to give some refreshers about the show um, tonight. Um, this show is going to be like our normal show for those of you who are new. Um, we actually share everything about sewing right here, um, anything. And if you have questions, we have an ask a question link down below. All you have to do is hit that link, post your questions, and we promise we'll get to it before the end of the show. Now, before before I start getting long-winded, I'm going to pass it over to our beautiful Dawn, whose face is missing, <laughs> so she can actually introduce our guest for tonight. Are you ready, Dawn? Yes, I definitely am. Good evening, everybody. Sorry about the technical difficulties. I'm also thrilled to be here. Um, tonight, we are interviewing Jillian Whitcomb, and we are thrilled. Um, I was telling Myra earlier, I um, first I, don't, I always say I live living underneath the rock sometimes, and this is one of those <laughs> cases because I don't know how I miss um, seeing okay. a lot of Jillian's work because it is fabulous. And yeah. as always, my favorite sewist are the people who also build up the sewing community, and she is definitely one of these ladies. So she is a Canadian, so yay, another Canadian. <laughs> um, she's also uh, a teacher, um, a blogger. You might have seen her blog, Crafting a Rainbow. It is fabulous not yeah. only because you can see her fabulous sewing makes or learn more about sewing with knit fabrics because she does some amazing sewing with knit fabrics and gives you fantastic tips but she also does things like teach you how to take better photos for your blog yes she used to be part of the curvy sewing collective one of the editors she's also one of the founders of the socialists which we will talk about more later but is pretty freaking fabulous in my opinion yeah um, Yes, Mine she's too. just an amazing, and she is so friendly. I I was at a recent PR weekend, and people were coming up to talk to her and talk about lovely and very, very, like I said, friendly. So we are thrilled to have her on the show this week. And just a hint, next week, where she's even going to be co-hosting with us. So we're just thrilled <laughs> yeah. to have her two weeks in a row. So welcome, Jillian. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. I really, oh my gosh, I'm excited, and I promise I'm trying. I'm gonna try not to geek out. And I have to tell you, I'm like Dawn. I guess I must be one of those people under the rock with Dawn, um, because before Dawn told me who was coming on, I and, and we talked about it. I was like, I'm sorry, but I don't know who she is. And I had to go out and I take a look. And I went, What is wrong with me? Why <laughs> didn't I find this woman? So to show you how much of a fan I am, I actually, actually joined. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! Myra, you just blew my mind! I joined <laughs> because I, it's, it's that amazing. I, I went out there and I looked at Crafting a Rainbow and I saw a picture of the picture. There's lots of stuff out there for you all. I mean, if you've not been to either Socialists or Crafting a Rainbow, you have to go look. But there was a picture out there of you in this Jaylee Mimosa mm -hmm. tea. Oh my God, you are hot <laughs> in that photo. I love that. I love that whole outfit awesome. just gorgeous on you but okay enough geeking i'm sorry i'm sorry dawn i'm sorry i tried <laughs> you only blew my mind by having a socialist tea that <laughs> in the world thank you hey i i am truly a fan i meant i meant that so let me step back and be a co-host now i'm gonna ask i'm gonna ask okay when and let's say why and when did you start your sewing journey um, so I started sewing as a kid with my mom, kind of, you know, generations of people. Actually, no. I used to always say generations of sewists in my family. But I found out this year that, um, 
So I learned to sew from my mom. My mom learned from her mom. But it turned uh -huh. my grandmother had actually learned to sew from my grandfather. He had grown up in Saskatchewan, very, very rural area. So he knew how to do all kinds of things from laundry to gardening to sewing. And so he actually taught my grandmother to sew after they got married. So wow. Um, uh, he, yeah. So that's actually how my family started to sew. And I'm quite proud that actually my dad, the first thing my dad ever sewed was like a technical Gore-Tex rain jacket in the 70s. And the second thing my dad has ever sewn was a technical like hiking hammock undercover this year. So I come from a family of makers, even if it's just from time to time. Um, wow. So um, that's how, I'm just gonna answer a question. Um, yeah, I see that. <laughs> that's how I learned to sew. And I, I got a sewing machine for my 18th birthday when I was moving out. And I wasn't a pattern sewist at the time. So mm -hmm. I would just make like these ginormous, uh, I can't even make them ginormous enough on my screen, ginormous uh, <laughs> pants. They were the full 45 inch width, thank you. 45 inch width of the fabric. And then I would take them in and take them in and take them in until they <laughs> vaguely fit my body. Um, and so I brought that sewing machine to university and I remember, Okay, so this is who I am as a sewing. So I bought this pair of low rise flare brown corduroy pants because it was oh, like one. <laughs> um, and I'm so short, I'm like five two, right? So I took the wide uh, bell bottom hem off the bottom and I made it into a waistband up at the top. <laughs> so low rise. I lined it with like, uh, rubber ducky flannelette fabric. And I was oh. like, right, now I'm done. <laughs> For years, that was the kind of sewing I did. Um, and I, I managed to get really intimidated about sewing patterns. Uh, mm -hmm. So I didn't use them, even though I had used them as a teen. I just kind of psyched myself out. So it wasn't uh -huh. until I was 29 and I just moved back from Japan. I was living with my parents, my brand new husband with me at my parents. Um, and my husband cleared out a sewing room for me in the basement and my mom helped me get back into making clothes. Oh, cool. That is so awesome. Oh my goodness. Now you mentioned that you really hadn't started with um, sewing the patterns until you were a little older. Yeah. So you, did you have any professional training along the way anywhere? No, the only class I've ever taken was bra making. And I took that maybe uh -huh. four years ago, but other than that, I'm just, Wow. An intuitive sewist because I make most of it up or I read a lot on the internet. Oh my goodness. Well, the internet gives us a lot as I learned today by watching everything you did. <laughs> but, um, I, and I know you just mentioned that, you know, the internet, but truly your inspiration for a lot of the things you do, where does that come from? Um, so, even, no, I guess. Um, so I studied international development in school and I had these grand plans that like every 18 year old, you're going to go out and change the world. Oh, yeah. And then through the course of that, it became pretty clear that like, what did I know that any 18 year old didn't know? And that wasn't, who am I to go tell people how to live? Life? <laughs> so I ended up teaching and I work with English as a second language learners. Um, so I feel like that just got me thinking about, okay, I'm not a couture sewist. I don't have fabulous skills to teach people, but what I can do is organize and facilitate discussion. And, and I feel like that's kind of been my niche online. Wow, and it shows too. Oh my gosh, you have so much. I really can't wait to get back in there and start reading and uh, a lot of the information that's out there because you truly have a lot out there for people. If you, again, I must say, if you've not, been to um, Crafting a Rainbow or The Socialist. And there's a hashtag out there for socialists too. So, you know, guys really inspire yourselves. Go take a look. I'm fine. Um, Dawn, 
we can't see you, but do you have anything that you would like to ask her right now? I'll periodically check in with you because I can't see your facial expression. <laughs> Oh, no problem. I, I just put this up because you were mentioning there's lots of stuff on our crafting rainbow site. And this is like one example to the pros and cons of rayon knits. I mean, you wrote this yeah. in 2015, but it's still very applicable today because um, they are wa wildly popular. So um, yeah. just to, you know, give you a visual of what Meyer was talking about. There's also like at yeah. the top, you can see the ta tabs here, bra making, lazy tips for sewing knits, tried and true patterns. So the Better Pictures project um, was part of the reason you got invited to the PR weekend. Um, that I found that quite good. Um, you know, as one of the people out in the audience, I would like to say it was amazing because, uh, yeah, you could see everyone in the room was inspired. Can you give us maybe a couple tips that you shared with us then um, for our viewers as well? Sure. So the Better Pictures project started, just set it up a little, started as a blog series because I had a good camera and I sometimes got good pictures and I sometimes got terrible pictures. So I was just really frustrated. So I made myself a little six month project and I reached out to bloggers that I found inspiring and said like, what's a tip you can give me? And then for that month, I'd try that. So um, I had different things where like, how to take jumping photos or sitting photos or you know, taking lots of photos, um, different editing techniques, that kind of thing. And I found it really helped me. I feel like, um, and this is part of what I said at, at Pattern Review, like I'm a very normal looking person. Like sometimes when you look at magazines, you're like, oh, they're a model, right? But what <laughs> yeah. I love about sewing blogs is like, yeah, he's a short size 18, 35 year old. Like, cool. <laughs> you're so cute. You're gorgeous. What made a difference for me is, um, first of all, getting, ooh, Wait, visual aids. I was just out taking pictures in my backyard. So I use an like a 10 year old DSLR um, little camera and I have a remote, which you can buy on Amazon for just like $20. You can also get one for your phone. And if you can just stand there and go click, 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 right? It's <laughs> And then you don't have a friend or a spouse or whatever who's like, okay, are we done yet? Yeah, no. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Or for me, it's that my husband's so tall that he's like, you know, taking a <laughs> all high and I love two feet tall. Um, yeah, take lots of photos, just practice. I think, you know, there's so many great examples. And even like the people I see who are on here who I know, you guys take great photos and you can see personality. You can see, yeah, they're yeah. in their back garden again. Yeah, you know there's that fence again or whatever. I don't think our photos have to be, you know, catalog or well, magazine quality, but I think just get out there. My big theory is, and this is where it comes to Curvy Sewing Collective and the socialists, I think it's good for ourselves and it's good for other people to see just normal people looking yes. good and happy in their clothes. On their bed, right? Like if I said, well, you know, I'm not going to take pictures today because my hair is frizzy or, you know, I gained two inches on my hips or something, yeah. then other people are not going to have that. Like, oh, look at there, you know, there she is, right? Like, I think it's exactly be normal figures, all ages, all backgrounds, you know, just feeling good in their clothes. <laughs> exactly. And you show that. Dawn, this is a good segue. If you could do that, um, bring up her um, her blog again. Um, in the home section, um, I think it's the fourth uh, article down. I just want to show you, and that was one of the questions for me, Jillian, was that you um, said that your husband was taking pictures. And I think it's like the fourth or fifth one down, uh, right there where it says the Jaylee Mimosa tea. Now that picture there, did you take that one, Jillian? Yeah, that's just me. And like, you can always see there's a little remote in my hand right there. Um, yeah. That's just me on my front porch. That is a gorgeous picture. And that's my uniform. I love a good, uh, nice fitting tee with some leggings or nice. some shorts. That is my uniform. When I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cute on her. I love that picture. They're just gorgeous. I think you need that pattern then. I love jelly patterns. Yeah. They're medium as well. And they do a big range of sizes from kids to adults. And they are yeah. fantastic. And I love the fabric you selected to make it. It just 
I mean, that's something that you could dress up and go out for cocktails, or you could just like you lounging around the house, you know? It's just super cool. And those pictures are fabulous. Right. Absolutely. And I think our viewers are gonna love the fact that you gave that tip about, you know, some of you who are using older DSR, uh, DSLRs and you can get a remote if you don't have one to help you out. That's awesome. Yeah, and they're nice and affordable as well. So if you lose it, you can get another yeah. one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now let's ask you um, for our viewers so they know too, what are some of your, what are some of your go-to resources for fabrics and patterns, the things that you repeatedly go for? Um, I am like a cash rat girl. Sorry, my husband just walked in. <laughs> I'm a cashmerat girl. Like it is, so I'm a pattern tester for cashmerat. And if you don't know her, she does size twelve to twenty six. Anyone know exactly? Um, so I love her patterns because they come in like different bust cup sizes. They're really curvy friendly. Um, so if I had to wear one designer forever, it would be cashmerat. And probably like I could live forever in Jali. I could live a long time in closet case patterns. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, what about fabric resources? Um, I buy mostly fabric that's like $7 a meter or less. Um, so I tend to go like bargain hunting. So okay. our local chain in Canada is Fabric Land. And um, yeah, I buy a lot of things from like their discount table. I also, I blog for Kelly Fabrics online. So they send me fabric from time to time. Um, and yes, those are Canadian dollars. <laughs> so, while my sister's here, I feel like I should say like, one of the things I love about sewing is that um, I sew for myself. I'm also currently right now sewing for a couple cousins I'm gonna meet. I sew a ton for my sister. Wow. I sew for my husband, for my dad, like. Wow, it's, yeah. It's, a nice way to show people you love them while also helping get through the massive amount of stash that I have. So, oh. yes. It's a beautiful stash. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess uh, Annie B is your sister <laughs> because she says she's a super lucky sister. <laughs> return, so I am also a lucky sister. Oh, that's awesome. That's truly awesome. Okay, Dom, before I ask the next next question you want to get in i'd love to um i would just say um i don't know sometimes when you watch tv and look at the internet you see stuff and it just kind of brings you down seeing what's going on in the world some places not yeah. getting too heavy here but i think sewing is kind of like our little corner of the world where some of that stuff yeah. might not touch us as much you know mm -hmm. yes out there people are in the comments are brutal sometimes even before they know the facts news not news whatever but yeah i i like that um the socialists in particular, it's like celebrates the things that make us different, which I think is lost on a huge population of the world that she could yeah. celebrate what makes us different. Um, but then it's also discussing something that we all have in common, something that we love. So I think yeah. the whole concept is brilliant. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, please do everybody. But yeah. can you maybe tell us a bit about how that kind of came about? Yeah, so socialists started Oh my gosh, so many years ago, 2015, <laughs> um, came out of a Twitter conversation. Like, you, so you uh, guys met on Periscope, I think, right? Yep. Um, yep. So that's where your community kind of came yep. from. Socialist was born from Twitter because Twitter was the place to be before Instagram for sewists. Um, and so we think of these like crazy, we're like, we need to do like a Viking sewing month or like, <laughs> Let's all do grunge sewing. And so um, the term socialist was created. We just had a post actually about it on the blog. Um, just two friends riffing about what do we call ourselves, people who like to be on social media and like to sew. And so the socialist was born really from like a very diverse group of people, um, different genders, different orientations, different nationalities, different languages. Um, kind of as this place that we could come together and just have fun together is really lighthearted. So that ran for a couple years and then I rebooted, I went, I burned out basically. <laughs> and I went and worked as an editor for Curvy Sewing Collective, which is something I believe in so hugely and was a great learning opportunity. But you know, how do you build a sustainable community? 
um, you know, three posts a week, group of editors, all those things that now we've replicated in the socialists. Wow. So the socialist goal is to be a sewing blog for everyone, right? My blog is my voice and your blog is your voice, but where do you go just to hear all the voices, right? Yeah. So that was what our goal was, that we would have all kinds of authors. Um, theme months are kind of like the glue that brings us together, right? They're the fun part. We try and make them super inclusive and accessible. So it's never gonna be like, winter party dresses because it's not winter for everybody not everyone yeah. wears a dress not everyone wants to party right like yeah. so you know we try and keep them really open so our august one for example is uh your so style hero so who is it that's your style hero and then sew something inspired by them and that could be a blogger a sewist um a celebrity a fictional character whatever floats your boat um yeah, so Socialist right now is a blog. We have three posts a week. We have Instagram. Oh, there it is. So Style Hero. Um, and we've had about 100 authors in the past 12 months since we relaunched. We just hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. So I feel like it's clearly something that resonates with the community. And we're really invested in making something that we can sustain for a long time. Yeah, well, that's really, really cool. And I actually was going to take the survey, um, mm -hmm. but I've not been, I started taking it and it started asking questions I could not honestly answer because <laughs> of just learning today. So I, I stopped and I said, I'm going to put it away until I get a little more knowledge behind me and reading a lot more of the socialists and your blog, um, the uh, Crafting the Rainbow. And then I'm going to go from this to I am. <laughs> yes! Well, I hope you're going to come right for us at some point, both of you. <laughs> but I tell you, um, Dawn was so right. Um, this is a wonderful place um, to go. There's so many groups and communities out there that are really great. But there's just something about this one I think everybody should take a look at. I mean, you, there's something, there's just something about it. It's just inclusive, like she said, of everything and everyone. So um, I think it would be very, uh, people would be very hard pressed not to find something there that they're attracted to, is what yeah, I'm trying to say. One of the things that we really set as our mission this time was that we're not just, you know, like you were saying, like, there's tough things in the world and everyone has their own experience of life. So I'm a, you know, white, married, middle-class, educated Canadian woman, right? So my experience of being on the blogosphere, yeah, I can find a pattern where people look like me. I can find a designer who looks like me. You know, I can find people with my measurements. I'm a size 18, so I can sew most patterns. Um, but that's not everybody's experience. So we've started this, uh, series called who we are and we invite people to contribute you know what's it like to be a blogger over 50 what's it like to be really tall or really short or queer or um you know have chronic health issues whatever it is because yeah. i think if we just push those things under the rug then we're not learning about each other's experiences yes but the community's been amazingly open about hearing what people have to say and whether or not it's their perspective saying, oh, now I understand it better. So I think that's something we're really pushing forward on that, you know, those discussions need to happen. So if they weren't happening somewhere else, we're going to do them ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's so true. Oh, my gosh. If only politics could join forces. With <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to go there, but I had yep. to. <laughs> Okay, let's make it a little more lighthearted. Let's ask about some of your very favorite projects that you worked on. I mean, the um, ones that you just felt, I know a lot of times I ask this question and my response is, well, they're all my favorite projects, but yeah. is there one particular one that you just love over everyone? I, I love everything. <laughs> I knew it to Dawn before is that I don't do like big ticket, you know, ball gowns or wool winter coats that take uh -huh. me months. So like, you know, as I sit here, I've got the pile of things that I've finished and haven't left my, my uh, sewing room. So I've got 
a myrtle dress. I sewed my coat. Like I've made this oh. pattern a bunch of times. The skirt is a Camino cap. I've made that like 30 times. I just made uh, my cousin and I matching Durango tanks. Oh, I just did one. <laughs> it's like I've used this pattern like eight times in the last year. Love it. Oh my gosh, that fabric. It goes so great with your um five of for 2018 too. You want to be more of a cat than a dog. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> not follow. So yeah, no, I kind of um my big goal this year is to dress a little more boldly. And so mm -hmm. to make sure that I choose like the loudest prints that border on garish. Mm -hmm. Um and so yeah, my sister's totally right. My Una uh Baluna cocoon dress, which was my tribute month dress last year, is like this giant cocoon shaped maxi uh -huh. um, vertical orange stripes and multicolored oh, stripes. I think yeah, yeah I saw that one. one. Right. Yeah, that so that's like that's a dress I'd wear to work or I'd wear out, but I feel like a boss in that dress. Yeah. Um so I'm definitely trying to you know, at first, I think it's so exciting when you can sew clothes that look like you bought them in a store. Yes. And now too. I'm kind of like, okay, what are the clothes that look like I couldn't buy them in a store? You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I think that's, that's a very awesome. important evolution, too. You hear a lot of people mention it, too. At first, you want to get so much like what's in a store ready to wear. And then all of a sudden, you're like, now I want to stand out. I got my level to the so exactly. to a level that it's tidy enough it's it's yeah construction wise it's good now i want to stand out and i actually have had the same realization lately like what i wore to had a review weekend the things i wore i didn't <laughs> i tried because i'm shy to wear things yeah. that put me out there whether i liked it or not yes and I, think, and I think it's cool that we could do that as sewists yeah absolutely and you did it beautifully. Yeah, that dress is gorgeous. Your sister is absolutely correct. I did see that one because it was actually along with um, Hey June, uh, what was it? Um, hey? Uh, oh my gosh. The Yes, the Santa Fe. You, you That's did the Santa Fe. Just maxified. Oh, that was made from the yeah. Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, because I, I noticed, I picked up on because I just finished two Santa Fe tops um, today, uh, awesome. yesterday and today. I love that pattern. Love, so love, good. love. Yes. So you did it beautifully. Um, they should have um, actually given you some monetary for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I love that dress. <laughs> okay, okay, we got the favorite projects okay mm -hmm. what about the one that you did and you looked at it and you said why did i make this and would you redo it again if you had an opportunity oh gosh yeah um uh -oh. i'm literally looking around <laughs> things that i've sewn and discarded um, so yeah i I try not to regret things I've tried that have not worked. So for example, I just made a, I don't know if you know the Three's a Charm, Decades of Style Three's a Charm. It's like a little tailored jacket with a single button. Mm -hmm. um, and I made it before in a crazy print and I loved it. Then I was like, okay, I need to like make a solid wardrobe builder piece, which was really the kiss of doom. Um, uh -oh. So I sewed it in this navy twill and I put it on and it like, looks like I'm wearing dress up clothes to be like somebody else, right? Because it's <laughs> dark navy. And I tried doing, you know, Japanese sashiko embroidery, like white stitching. <gasps> wow. on the cuffs. I was like, oh, that'll like spice it up. No, my cat's been sleeping on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am wondering about giving it to my sister. Um, <laughs> I'm about to sew that pattern again in a stretch black and white leopard twill. And Ooh. I will wear that Ooh. version. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds right? really like, I think you can't regret it. I think if we were only aiming to sew winners, then how would you try weird new silhouettes? I don't know. Part of the fun. That's, that's so true. Absolutely. And there's a tip, you guys, in that. Yes. If you sew something and it doesn't turn out, don't regret it. No. Either remake it. Or get, yes, exactly. <laughs> Give it away. Oh my you goodness. You probably learn something from the experience, whether it's that, yes. well, that style doesn't suit me, or, yes. you know, 
you know, a technique or whatever, you always learn something even from your mishaps. <laughs> well, and that fabric had been in my stash for a long time, which actually connects to the ask a question. Can I segue into that? Sure, uh, if you like. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh. I'm throwing off your, your oh, stuff. Yeah, no, um, yeah, normally we do them at the end in case people want to come on camera to ask you them, but yeah. if it's ah, in well, now, feel free. Uh, no, I won't answer it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've been in my stash for a long time and it found okay. me. Wow. Yeah. It's a, and that's something when you find a gem in your stash, you know, mm -hmm. I never thought I'd hear myself say that because for years I never had a stash. I've only had a stash probably for the last four years. And mm -hmm. um, I've been sewing for over 30, but I just mm -hmm. sold everything that I did. But now listening to some of the ladies when i read their blogs and stuff and they come out with these gorgeous pieces oh this is something i had in my stash that i think i bought probably 10 years ago it's like oh my gosh can i come shopping in your stash i know but, i dream of having uh carolyn from diary, diary. So so <laughs> can I, uh, I dream she said like a walk-in room stack yes. with fabric and like I have warned my husband that is my end goal <laughs> oh my <laughs> yeah it's happening now I have to ask a question on that sure. seriously and if you're watching Carolyn you know I love you but I just have to ask for all of you people out there that have these huge stashes like that um and I'm not being sarcastic. I, honest. This is an honest question. Do you really think that you're going to get through that stash in your lifetime? No, but I'm going to have fun trying would be my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I love things like there was just that Baltimore uh, fabric swap um, that Renee from Celia's Pants organized. Um, and I love things like that because even if your stash turns out to be not right for you in 10 years and you look at me like, oh, no, my style has changed. You can give it to someone else or you can, yeah. you know, de stash it, sell it on, whatever. Um, I think the size of your stash depends a lot on um, how easy it is for you to buy the fabric you like. So I don't know about you, Myra, but like it, so there's one sort of fabric store in my town. And then other than that, I have to drive an hour to get to like a chain fabric store or two hours to get to like a fabric district, which is mostly just that chain store. Um, so if I wanted to sew something tonight or tomorrow or on the weekend, either I have to order online and it's really sure. expensive in the States or slow from Canada and it's not, Canadian fabric is not so much like bargain fabric online. Um, or I have to drive an hour and then I'll probably buy a coffee all the way. And you know, like <laughs> the prices kind of skyrocket. Exactly. So I buy fabric I love in the colors I know I wear, which is basically, you know, Beautiful. you can see it in my stash, right? Like I match everything behind me because those are my colors. So if it's in my colors and it's the kind of fabric I like to sew, I'm going to buy it while it's a bargain because mm -hmm. later I might not be able to get it or it's too much of a hassle. So yeah. the bigger the stash, the better for me. But yes, maybe eventually I'll have to sew it all for somebody else. Like, <laughs> honestly, I have like a list. I have 12 projects this week. It's my first week of summer vacation as a teacher. I have 12 things to sew and they're all for other people, right? So that's like 20, 30 meters of stash out the window. So yeah, true. you got to buy a lot. Now, do you charge for your sewing? No, I have tried selling handmade things before and I don't, I don't like sewing to that level of perfection. So oh, okay. I prefer just to sew as a gift. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I noticed a lot of people are saying, um, like, Dawn, <laughs> nope, <laughs> I guess they're not going to worry about sewing through that stash. No. You know, there's been some really great estate sale fabric. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you never know. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, oh, Dawn, before I ask her another question, you want to get in? Uh, goodness me, I got kind of comfy just listening. It's nice watching. <laughs> <laughs> Leaning back in my chair, having a good time. <laughs> well, I do have to ask Jillian, do you, what aspect of sewing do you find most challenging to you? Because right now I can't think of anything that would be challenging to you. Oh my gosh. No, I'm such a, so I love the process of sewing, like 
the whir of the serger is my happy place. Um, but I actually, I just begged, begged and pleaded to start pattern testing for closet case patterns because I love her patterns, but lots of them are outside my comfort zone. Like every pair of jeans I've ever made had a pull on elastic waist. I've never mm -hmm. done as a comply. Um, mm -hmm. I've promised to make a coat for years. I've promised to make a bathing suit for years. I do make my own bras, but I recently gave up and started buying them because I just, I don't find that much joy in five to eight hours on one technical project, like mm -hmm. a bra or a pair of jeans or a coat I think would take more than my five to eight rate. Um, yeah, so those are the things that partially intimidate me and partially just don't inspire me. But actually, Dawn, I have not told you this, but Ooh. since I was eyeing up your coats on your website, I started <laughs> having, like, she's only five hours away. I wonder uh -oh. if I could go stay at her house for a weekend and sew a coat with her help. <laughs> Anytime, just let me know. Watch out, it'll be showing up on your doorstep. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, goodness. Oh, now, just before we continue on to, if you have any questions, there is a tab yes. that says Ask the Questions. Um, please post your questions down there. And if anyone who's posted a question down there or is planning to would like to hop on camera, and ask Jillian the question yourselves. Um, please do, because that would be fantastic. But <laughs> yes, goodness, Myra, do you have any more questions? Oh, good, Lorian, said you'll hop yeah, on. Um, do you have any more questions before we um, uh, ask? Well, just one. Um, and I know that you, you have the socialist, you have your own blog, but are there any plans for you to do like a collaboration with another blogger or someone? No, no. <laughs> um, but like what I'm loving so much about the socialist right now is it for the first year after relaunch, it was basically everything passed through me. So I asked, we have this amazing community group, um, including my sister who edits 90% of our posts. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> um, so I ask for help. People take on tasks. They report back to me. You know, I tag the posts and put them up and stuff. But we just okay. moved to having a six person editorial team. And so now that we've got manpower for the socialists, um, I'm really excited to see what we can do. Like, I love your model of having this just super casual chit chatty show where you get to hang out with people. Um, you know, I'm fascinated by podcasts, just the YouTube world is something I don't understand at all, but like, I watch YouTube for other things. I just have never gotten into it for sewing, which is obviously why I don't know you guys well enough. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I think I feel like socialist is growing and I love where it's going, but mm -hmm. I can't actually predict where it's going to end up. So probably that's going to be my like big next step. Well, I tell you, um, you have a great platform yourself in the socialist. Um, it's really awesome. But you surprised me when you said that about YouTube, because that's another huge place. Oh. Where there's a big sewing community, I'm surprised by. <laughs> I've, tried. I've tried to get into um, sewing on YouTube, but I think the challenge for me is like sitting there for ten minutes and watching like a pattern review. I think mm -hmm. I'm more used to a blog where I can go through it in two minutes, right? Uh -huh. So then I think it's just a change of beauty. I would love to know more about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah well. Good recommendations in the comments. If there's anyone you really love to watch beside these lovely ladies. <laughs> yeah, there's so many out there. Oh my goodness. Um, we've had quite a few that are actually, if you just go to our playlist, you'll see a lot of the people that are actually YouTubers out there. And um, Dawn is so wonderful in that. She lists all their information. So if they have a YouTube channel, their link is right there in there. So yeah, it's really, really nice. Sounds like my summer holiday project is going to be getting to know sewing YouTube. Yeah, and it looks like you got a request out there too. Someone said they would love to see a socialist radio. I love Patsy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patsy said, um, oh my goodness, I get up in the middle of the night to watch YouTube. <laughs> yeah, well, she's not by herself. I, I, I actually plug in. That's what I do when I go to bed. I plug into my iPad, just like this, while my husband's asleep, yep. and watch YouTube. 
Well, my husband doesn't, all summer long, my husband doesn't go to bed till like 5 a.m. So like, I can watch YouTube all night long. <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you wish for because it can be addicted. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'll become nocturnal just like him. <laughs> okay, so we okay. should probably get yeah. going to the questions. Maybe yeah. we'll start off since Lori said that she could um, yes. come on camera. Uh, so invite her on. Okay, and I so, can talk to you forever, Jillian. I know. <laughs> I love finding out about you guys, and it's so much fun digging through a blog that you haven't spent a lot of time on. I love that. <laughs> and thank you for coming on and sparing and helping Dawn out next week when I'm not going to be here. I hope you have fun wherever you will be. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with, to visit my children. for um, They have, actually have a surprise for my husband and I. It's our 40th wedding anniversary. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we're excited. We don't know what they're going to do for us, but we're excited. Aww. <laughs> you need to get your husband to like share some top tips of 40 years married to a sewist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> we'll see. It looks like we, can, we can't see Lorianne, but um, I'm wondering if we can hear her. Hi. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, first of all, Myra and, and Don, thank you so much for the wonderful people that you get for this <laughs> show. Cool. I am every week I learn something new and, and meet a new person. And I'm just delighted to meet you, Jillian. Um, so a couple of the questions that I, that I put in the ask the questions you've kind of already asked. The first one was, or answered, I mean, uh, the first one was, do you want to do a vlog? Um, I personally am addicted to over 20 of them, yeah, <laughs> me too. which can be time consuming. Uh, but they're so much fun and I keep learning and, and they, um, inspire me. Um, so, so please consider that. I would have, be happy to follow you too. Um, also, my second question was closet case patterns. Congratulations on getting um, asked to be a pattern tester for Heather Lou on closet case. Oh my goodness, that's an honor. And my question was, do you, did you do ginger jeans? And it sounds like you haven't, but maybe you will. Yay. Um, so I actually got to got in the group to be a pattern tester for Heather Lou when ginger jeans were released. Oh. So years and years ago. And I had to say no, because it was like the first week of school in September. And I was like, oh, I can't learn how to make jeans this week. And so I said no. And then she never asked me again for years. Oh, so This year, when she was looking for testers again, I was like, please, please, please. Um, I've met her in person and she's lovely. So I have sewn like at least 10 pairs of ginger jeans, but I always sew the fly shut. Okay. And then I put like a, a piece of denim fabric, like a long rectangle with a piece of elastic sandwiched inside and zigzagged in place. And so I make like pull on jeans because I'm quite pear shaped. So I need my jeans to go like right up above my belly button so that they'll stay in place. And I just find the elastic like so comfortable uh -huh. so you get the jeans look with all the comfort of a legging. Yeah. Nice. Well, nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So um, I have one more quick question. And I'll turn it over to other people who might want to talk with you. Um, so what podcasts do you listen mm -hmm. to? And have you heard of or listened to Stitcher's Brew, which is my current new favorite? <laughs> no, I haven't. Um, but I need to. I hope it will be. I'll write that down somewhere. Um, by Gabber Dashery and uh oh, just forgot the other girl's name. She's lovely. Megan. Thank you, Lori. And I knew you'd know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. Um, so until April, I had like an hour long commute each way to work. And so I did get into listening to podcasts then. Um, the Sewing Mavens. And I used to listen to Maker Style back when that was on the air. Love to sew podcast. Um, but mostly what I listen to on podcasts is BBC History. Um, BBC History. Oh, we're getting weird. Um, yeah, so most of what I, I listen to on podcasts actually isn't sewing, but is like 
some historian talking about some tiny event hundreds of years ago, which I also love. Nature in you, you can't help yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Well, thank you so much for taking my questions and I'm just honored to, to watch you and I'll be here to, uh, next week to see you too. So thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. And I hope we can chat about uh, what I should be listening to and watching. No problem. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Lori. Thank you. Bye now. I was just waving at Lori Ann. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Brilliant of me. Okay, we have another question from Rebecca Trevino. Thanks for asking a question, Rebecca. Um, keep track of your fabric purchases. Does your fabric ever get lost in your stash? I have had to make an Excel spreadsheet for my stash. Oh my gosh, that you must have a huge stash, Rebecca. <laughs> Jeez. <I like> it. <laughs> we would be friends. Um, I do not catalog my stash or anything like that. Um, but I do have my stash quite visible as you can see. So, uh, I am currently sewing out of our dining room. So because my previous sewing room was too small. Um, so I have my stash kind of organized by color and also by like, these are things for my husband these are things for me and then I have all my guys i am hardcore into so don't clean i'm sorry if that gives you a panic attack but i feel like no. i should burn you before i show no. you around. that's a, quite okay we understand so don't clean so then i have like woven stretch denim and stuff in here okay. and then somewhere upstairs in a closet i have bags of like seersucker and quilting cotton and rayon shelly and things i don't really sew that often so Yes, things do get lost in my stash, but then I'm really excited when I find them. So that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can see most of the time. And I do so like year round, probably one or two knit garments a week for myself or for someone else. So while I buy a lot of fabric, I also go through a lot of fabric. So it doesn't build up too yeah. terribly. Well, that, that made me feel better. Oh, sorry, Mara. I was going to say the same thing you said because I was going to say the same thing. It made me feel good seeing that you had a little bit of mess in your in your sewing room. You can definitely come visit me every any time then. Um, if you, <laughs> your sewing room was too clean, I, <laughs> maybe not. But um, yeah, I, I definitely it definitely made me feel a little bit better. And I find sometimes in the middle, especially of a big project, oh my gosh, it looks like a tornado went through my. <laughs> well, I so, said okay. I'm going to try to do this slowly, not to make you guys dizzy. But here's my pattern filing. Uh, method, which is stack everything on this table, and then if I it at the bottom, and if I sewed it recently, it's closer to the top, and then I started printing things on different colored paper, so I'd be like, oh, that pattern's on blue paper, so I can find it more easily. So it's, it's kind of a system. It's just it's idiosyncratic, but it works for me. Yes, yep. <laughs> and we understand. Believe me, we do. We hear that so much on different, you know, live streams and things like that when people are showing and it says, please excuse. But you know <laughs> what we call that? It's the creative juices at work. Because if it were clean, you're not creating. Well, and some people love a clean and tidy space. And I might like to be one of those people, but I'm not. So I just do <laughs> <laughs> uh, We have another question. Uh, this one is from Kathy. And um, she would love to know what your favorite TNT pattern is. And for those of you people who don't know what TNT is, it's tried and true, I believe. Yeah, tried and true patterns. Oh, man. So I do have a section on my blog with yep. like some yep. of my favorites because it's so hard to choose. Um, Cashmere at Concord t-shirt, such a winner. Uh, the Santa Fe, uh, Hey June tank. I love ginger jeans. Love them. Um, like the jelly, like raglan top and basically any jelly pattern. Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. If you just, uh, take a look in there, that's yeah. my sister and I, hi Anne. Um, hey, hey. And yeah, whatever pattern I have, I prefer just to sew it a ton of times because I don't, beside pattern testing, which is kind of the way I make myself step out of my comfort zone, 
I'd way rather like riff on something I know will fit um, yeah. so that I can just enjoy the creative process of sewing. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite TNT, Kathy? Tell us in the chatty section if you do. Yeah, that'd be yeah. interesting. Anyone in the audience too. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, because we, we, I think everybody knows what mine is. Oh, <laughs> because I, I bet it so much. When we had Heather, <laughs> yes, when we had Heather on here, I had my stack of ginger jeans I made. <laughs> and I almost beat her, <laughs> but she had me beat. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. So oh, Kathy's is the Pamela Pattern Basic T-shirt. Thanks, for Kathy. I've never tried any Pamela Patterns patterns, but I know like they're really popular in the Curvy Sewing Collective. And I know like the people who love them seem to really love them. So I will check it out. And Lorianne's is the Sew Over at Molly Talk. She's made Is 11 the of them. Wow. Shoulder wow. And a yeah. I like that oh. kind of design. Yeah, I'll have to go back and look at some of these patterns because I, I, I'm a casual woman now and I love, you know, casual clothes. And that's that's cool. Molly Top. I'll have to go and look that one up too. And Pamela Patterns. Okay, we have one more question in here. And this is from Lorianne. Um, what sewing serger? Cover him machines. Do you have you have over there? Ah, she saw them. Walk with me. Hi, come on over. Um, so, <laughs> bottom of the line machines. So, my uh, sewing machine. Hello. Is I brought this bottom of the line brother home from Japan. Bought it when I lived there. It was like two hundred dollars. Um, it's labeled in Japanese and the booklet's in Japanese. So oh, it's no. great. Um, I got this cover stitch, I think on like Amazon and it's a brother cover stitch 2340 CV. I think it's also, you know, it's like the $500 bottom of the line one. Um, I have that one. My mom, that one. best enabler ever co-purchased this brother 3034D serger with me years ago. And in theory, we were gonna share it, but obviously in practice, it's been mine forever after. I just try and sew her lots of clothes on it, so she never asked for it back. <laughs> so those are my machines, nothing fancy. I do have a couple of vintage machines. I have like a vintage 100 year old treadle, which is my machine for treadle. Um, and a and couple of oh, oh, vintage oh, machines oh, I just picked up from a friend of my sister. Oh, no. or not, but yeah, those are my, my basic workhorses, which I think it's nice to know that you don't have to have the $2,000 really fancy one. I mean, I'm yeah. sure if I did, yeah. I would love it, but you don't need to have that. I'm so glad you I'm said so that, because, you said we that have, because we have, uh-oh, we're getting uh -oh. feedback. Sorry about that, you all. But we actually have um, some new sewers that are out there. are always asking on different forums, you know, do you have to have, you know, an expensive machine? And you really don't. I mean, look at the beautiful clothes that you actually create. Um, you don't, you yeah. really don't. And I think a lot of times it's your preference and if you can afford it and that's what you want, yes, you buy that. Yeah. But if it's just for sewing, like Jillian says, you really don't need it to create beautiful clothing. It's just one of those things we want, <laughs> I, I should say. Like, in my experience, at least, there is like a bit of a threshold. My first machine I bought in Japan was a hundred dollar machine. And it made like kathunk, kathunk every time it was <laughs> wilting cotton. So that one I got rid of and then I spent $200 and that one's lasted, you know, a decade. Um, same with like, I'd love to know from people who have used the Ikea $70 sewing machines. Like, yeah. I don't know if it's, if you should just spend 150 and get the lowest singer one, which I also own I a lot of sewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like buy what you can afford. I think that's yeah. Best. I agree, and my I have to share you this with you. Um, I just shipped out. I bought a brother 
um, I think it was a project runway machine for my granddaughter um, because we're actually going to visit her soon and for her birthday because she had mentioned she wanted to start to learn sewing. She's 17. And I shipped it out to her and told her dad, don't let her open it until I get there because I'm going to teach her how to sew. But I only paid $150, $59, I think, for this machine. And this machine is nice. I mean, it has a full table on it, which I don't have on my current sewing machine. Yeah. And, and she is more than she will ever need to create the beautiful clothes that she really wants. So any of you guys out there thinking about sewing and want to get you a new machine, unless you can afford it and that's what you want, you don't have to break the bank to get you a good sewing machine. You really don't. I think so. Yeah, and you know, lots of people swear by like the older fully metal, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s sewing machines. So that's solid options. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I was making a lot of jeans. Well, making jeans, um, and I have to tell you, I do, I have an old Euro Pro. That's what I sew on. Okay. And sh she does the job. But when I do top stitching, like you, Jillian, I bring out my old sinker. It's one of those heavy metal machines. Yeah. And that does wonders on jeans. That's the only thing I do my top stitching on is my old singer. So yes, in answer to the question there, um, she said yeah. she was doing making a lot of jeans. So um, okay, do we? We don't have any more questions in the queue. If anyone else has any other questions, Dawn, do you have some for Jillian? Uh, no, I'm just wary of the time and not wanting to keep everyone for hours yeah. and hours. And I know I you know. I get to hang out with her all next week. So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. We show. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, definitely. Before we wind up, I have two things to talk about. One is next week's show where Jillian will be co hosting and we will be interviewing Sewists to Watch. It's going to be part of a new series Myra and I are planning on doing, um, focusing on people from different countries. So yeah. the first one will be. Uh, Canadian Sewist Watch Part One, because just like in the States, there's so many, we'll probably have to hit Canada again and cover some more. Um, but yeah, we're definitely hoping that um, people in other countries, if you're keen um, to come on the show and do a show yes. like next week's show, um, we'd like to introduce you to lots more new people um, that you can yeah. follow and be inspired by. So next week, we have a whole bunch of people, uh, Margo creating In the Gap, Melanie from Following the Thread, uh, Erica from Handmade Wardrobe, uh, Taryn from Tannis Itis. <laughs> we gotta make sure I say that right. <laughs> Who's right here with us? So, I know uh, she's been in the comments right. all night. It's awesome, and we might even have more. Just double checking, but um, so yeah, it should be a really fun show, and I'm really looking forward to it because we we actually haven't had that many Canadians on, so it'll be really neat to have a bunch on, and um, you know, maybe we'll get more of an idea what it's like to sew in Canada. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. And then the only other thing is um, we'd like to remind everybody of what is coming up soon. Um, please do not forget that we have yes. You Think You Can Sew competition. I don't know why I always want to say it like that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we do. It is coming up. So we are looking for people to participate in the So You Think You Can Sew competition. It is a lighthearted fun competition yeah. it does have prizes but it's it's more just fun so yeah. what essentially happens is um you would we need at least four people four people to come on the show and what happens is um we split them into two rounds and people will come on so we'll have two people in september and they will come on the first week tuesday of september and they will get a mystery item sent to them in the mail they will open it up and then we will tell them the challenge and then two weeks later, they come on the show again, the third weekend in September. And then they will show us what they've made. We'll look at pictures. We'll hear stories about how it went. And people vote live on Crowdcast yes. for their favorite garment. And then we have round two in October, which follows the same kind of principle. You come on the first and the third week. And then the winners of round two, round one, and the winner of round two face off in the finals yes. in November. So then we'll have our... So you and really everyone can sew who enters it. I mean, yes, <laughs> they're, they're all amazing. Yeah, they are. Uh, nice. Yes. So if you would like to sew, I mean, participate in this competition, 
um, if you could just uh, either on our uh, website, which is thatsewinglab.com. Yes, it's got a very cheesy top picture. I've got to do something about that. We'll just, we'll just move that out of there so you can't see it. Um, <laughs> Um, and just go on there and there's a contact page and you can email us there or go to that sewing labs Facebook page and you can contact us there so yes. um, and while we're here just super quick if you did not know oh, we're gonna have to see that ugly picture again um, <laughs> we also have things like a show schedule here which I need to update but if you look underneath you'll see links to all our shows so if you want to see a certain person and you want to find out how Elizabeth did last year and so you think you can sew, it's right there. There's links to the show and everything. So just so um, in case you didn't know that, keep up to date with our news on our website, which again, I need to update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little outdated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just with well, uh, the show central. I definitely see some familiar names in the people watching who I feel like should seriously consider joining that competition. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see who jumps on board. And it yeah. was a lot of fun last year. Oh my gosh, there was some amazing projects that were done. Um, some amazing things happened. <laughs> so, yeah. So, sewing machines on airplanes and fluffy yeah. hotel rooms. And, <laughs> it was but, funny. But yeah, if you you don't understand what what's all involved, it's on the website, or just contact Meyer and I. We'd love to have yes. a chat with you. Just to yeah, if you have any questions, but. That's it for all the kind of newsy stuff. Okay. But uh, we just want to thank Jillian again yes. for coming on. It's been amazing chatting with you. Thank you. And I love so much this little community that you've built. And I love, you know, the fact that these videos get posted on YouTube afterwards. Am I right? Yep. So yep. people can watch them later. If you've missed episodes, you should go catch <laughs> up. <laughs> I just, I love any way that brings sewing people together. Right. And I think, Anything that feels authentic and real is good for our, like, giving us inspiration. Yes. doesn't give yes. you, like, that sense of, oh, man, I'm not as good. Or, like, you know, it's not competitive. <laughs> we love our hobby, and our yeah. hobby is fun, and there's great people out there. So thank you. Yeah. And we're all very helpful. If there's someone in need or someone has a question, all they have to do is ask. And they will get 100 million responses. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great night, well, everybody. Well, thank you. So if that's it, Dawn, I Definitely. guess we will end it. Thank you all once again for joining us. And we hope to all, I won't be there, but that lovely Jillian will see us next week, Tuesday, on another wonderful episode of That Sewing Blast. Good night, everyone. Bye, Jillian. Bye. <laughs> Bye.